Today, I want to give you some tips on using indirect vision, aka your mirror. Using indirect vision is crucial for ergonomics and good posture and efficiency, but it's a really hard thing to learn and get good at, and sometimes it's just easier not to use it, right? But there's a huge difference in the operatory between using it and not using it. Using the mirror with great posture, not using the mirror with not so great posture. See what I mean? <laughs> Today, I want to give you some tips on practicing at home with just some things that you probably already have laying around. We're going to start with this type of mirror, and then we're going to graduate to this. To start really simple, I'm just going to write something in block letters on this piece of paper. I'm going to write what I say most often when I'm seeing patients. And on the other side, I'm going to flip it around, and then I'm just going to draw a few simple shapes. We're going to do a circle, a triangle and a square, or I guess that's a rectangle. Just like that. Then I'm just gonna put this piece of paper flat on the counter. Now what I'm gonna do here is look through the mirror and trace around these letters, and I promise you it sounds easier than it is. But you're just trying to trace around the letters as best as you can. I've used indirect vision for a long time, and this exercise is challenging to me. <laughs> When we look in a mirror, it seems like things are reversed, but actually it's just reflected from front to back. And so sometimes we'll notice that these front to back movements, like here with this eye, is harder than like left to right. Yep, see, it's tricky, a diagonal. Now I'm going to flip it around and then I'm going to practice with these shapes. Same thing. Just try to trace the shape in the mirror. Try not to look at the piece of paper. Try to keep your gaze in the mirror. No cheating. It's just gonna help retrain your brain on how to see things clearly in the mirror. Now we're gonna use a coloring book. Same concept, just with color. And I probably didn't pick the best coloring book for this. This is kind of an advanced, uh, really detailed coloring book. But remember to look in the mirror and stay within the lines as best you can. This really helps just with the detail and again with those back and forth movements that can be kind of challenging. Doing this just a few, maybe a few minutes a day is really going to help start changing your brain and building that habit. Something else you can use is a little maze book and not just for four-year-olds. Remember, we're trying to look through the mirror and not at the piece of paper. Doing a maze like this really helps with the back and forth because that's what makes it so hard in a mirror because it reflects front to back. And so sometimes those straight line movements can be hard front to back versus left or right. Now that I've shown you this stuff, I wanna show you a, a level up. I wanna show you something more advanced now. To do this advanced exercise, you want to make sure you have a big book like this. You could use a dictionary or an old textbook, but you wanna make sure it's big. Then you're gonna have your same piece of paper from earlier, your pen and your hand mirror. This big book here is gonna act like your blinder. So you're gonna put your piece of paper down, put the book in front of it. And the goal is when you hold your hand mirror up to the words now, you're gonna scooch forward just enough so that this book is hiding what's on this piece of paper and all you can see is the reflection in the mirror. Got the book here, but all you should see is that, what's in the mirror. You don't wanna see that on the piece of paper. You wanna scooch back just enough so that that's all you see. This is legit next level, because even though we try not to look at the paper without the blinder, I mean, we do. So now I cannot see what's on the paper and it is very challenging. You can do this with um, this tracing, you can do it with the shapes, you can do it with the coloring, and you can do it with the maze as well. Now let's talk about using the dental mirror. I wish we could use something like this all day, but that's not really practical in the operatory. We need to get comfortable looking through something small like this. Speaking of dental mirrors, this is really important. Make sure that you're using an ergonomic dental mirror. What I mean by that is something that has a nice thick handle, like either one of these. It's got some texture on that handle and it's nice and light. What we're trying to do is reduce the pinch force when we're holding onto the mirror because that can be really straining for our hand. Let's avoid using a mirror like this, this heavy skinny mirror handle that really increases the amount of force that we need to actually hold onto it. 
we've got much better options out there. When we're practicing with this, it's the same concept as before, but just on a smaller scale. I've got a notebook here, so I'm gonna draw some shapes like we did earlier, but just tinier. Same concept as before, we're trying to look through the mirror, not at the piece of paper, as we trace these shapes. What I really like about these mirrors from Zerk is the mirror itself is really bright and reflective, and it's much brighter than a lot of the other mirrors on the market, which only helps us in the mouth. The brighter, the better. You can also try to mimic the positioning like you're uh, working on a patient. So I'm just putting my notebook straight up, and I'm gonna put my mirror underneath these shapes and trace them, almost like I'm working on the upper arch, and I'm looking through that mirror again. So just tracing those shapes as I go. It doesn't hurt to do some of these exercises with loops on as well, just to help you get used to what you're gonna experience in the operatory. Now let's play with the Typodont. I just got this Typodont off of Amazon. It's cheap, but it does the job. When we start playing with this, what we're trying to do is look, again, look through the mirror like we did with the paper, but we're just trying to trace. You can use a scaler or like a explorer or a probe or whatever you have. We're just trying to trace the edges of the teeth. We're just getting used to getting these directions right. So you can trace the gum line. You can go from apical to incisal or distal to mesial and just get used to how that feels and how that looks. You can also play on the occlusal surfaces and just go from like distal to mesial, buccal to lingual, just kind of play around and trace that, but make sure that you're looking through the mirror doesn't do much if you're just looking right at the two. So force yourself to look through the mirror. You can do it with the upper teeth too. They're just a little bit bigger. But again, just trace the shape of the tooth. Just getting used to that movement. This is really gonna help you when you're in the operatory. Whoop, <laughs> just lost a tooth. <laughs> Plus you're gonna be, you're gonna have your loops on. So you're gonna be able to see better with your headlamp. Just fixing my tooth here. But this is not easy, okay? It takes a lot of practice, it takes some time and a lot of repetition. If you're doing this a few minutes a day, you will notice that it's gonna become easier and easier for you to use indirect vision in the operatory. I do a lot of work in ergonomics and I can tell you if you want to save your neck and your back, we have to use indirect vision. Make sure that you're using ergonomic mirrors like these from Zerk. Try to stay away from these skinny ones. If this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up and I'd love to hear from you in the comments.